I find this time of year a time where we tend to think about the year. Did I achieve all my goals? What would I change about this year that I could change next year to make next year that little bit better? You're sort of going through it all, all the time. So let's talk about it. And one of my Christmas presents arrived. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, I am one of those sad people that have bought myself a Christmas present. And that is going to come in massively useful with our projects for next year. If we do them. I don't know. Boy, what a year it's been. I traded in my little van for this van. I got it all converted on a budget and I lived in it. It's amazing the lifestyle we've had. We've been to places like Glencoe. That was one of our first massive adventures that we went on. Now that was absolutely amazing. We ended up stopping in Glencoe, heading down to Fort William. We went down to the Glenvidden Viaduct. We really did have a full on amazing Scottish adventure. It was Danielle's first time into the Highlands and that was absolutely amazing that I could share it with her too. Spent loads of time up in the Lake District solely because there's a lot that I want to achieve up there. So I've just focused to sort of up there. Plus, that's the closest destination, mountainous destination to sort of my base. God, we really have been everywhere, haven't we? Spent loads of time in Snowdonia, loads of time in Norfolk, been down to Devon, Cornwall. I have done 30,000 miles in this van and I picked this van up in January. So, yeah, I could say I've done quite a fair, decent chunk of adventures in this van. Would I like to have done more? I would have liked to have done the adventures that I did, but for a longer period of time. Because most of the time, with my work life, it was just, I had a weekend spare, I had a couple of days spare, I had a week spare, and that's all it really was. So next year, I really would like to change that. Instead of doing a week here, go up there for a couple of weeks, just chill out, have a good time, be able to travel around those locations slowly, have more time to appreciate everything. That's definitely something I'd like to change for next year because basically this year has been very uh, trying to fit everything all in at once. With regards to the van though, is that come along how we planned? To an extent, yes. The van was always bought and designed in a sense that we'd do it on a tight budget and we'd enjoy it as a tight budget. And then progressively over time, we can turn it into a much more high-end sort of van. There's a lot going to be planned for this van through the very early parts of next year. L uh, right, let me just show you around to start with. I'm currently stuck in because I'm working down in Milton Keynes and it's raining outside. That's why the lights are on, to give me a bit of light. But we had a very um, sort of ADHD moment not long ago and I decided my overhead, all these units down here and the unit that's over here, decided you know what we'll knock it, knock it all about and just see what we can come up with i don't know why i decided that because i did kind of like how it looked this unit went and we replaced it with this thinner narrower unit with a sink that's under there with the tap yeah and uh, that's currently what that looks like i don't like the color of it and then all these overheads were black with like a real wood finish on them same with these ones down here can you guess what i'm about to say don't like them don't like them at all but this might be my cue to sort of go for a bit more of the high-end standard that I wanted. I'm not capable of doing a high-end standard at all. I don't like them that much. I still haven't put the door handles back on any of it. I just don't like it. But I've got some inspiration now. I've seen people do their vans, whether it be these VW Crafters or the Man TGE version, and they look really nice but I can't do the kind of finish that I'm looking for. I just don't have the skill set. Granted, I could always train myself to do it somehow. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there, but me, trial and error, I always mess it up. What I'm thinking, I might just go and buy the units. Not just the units, but instead of just units, a shower unit too. We've come up with a bit of a layout design-ish. Number one, that bed is five foot 10 across. I'm six foot two. You know, a bit like this, where I'm just sort of, like that yeah because let's face it if i sleep normal like this put it this way my feet are now flat on the end of the wall legs are straight and yeah not ideal when there's two years sleeping in the bed so i have two options option one side pods side pod both sides give myself that little bit of extra room job is that's it that's perfect yes right let's go on google and see how much that's going to cost that's where my dreams came crashing down because like most things on the VW Crafter New Shape, there's only one company that do it. There was a two or three, but a few of them have gone into liquidation. A few of them have stopped doing them. 
The reason they don't do them for this one is quite simply, it's a long wheelbase. So if you look at the wall just there, normally with the side pods, you just cut it down here, cut out the window insert that's there and slap it on the outside. Jobs are good and long wheelbase is different. About here, there's a structural beam and it's there to support yourself. It's part of the crumple zone. And I can't fit a pod across all the way across here with that beam in the way. There's only one company that will sell you the side pods and a jig for this. So you have to basically cut it out the roof, cut it out the structural frame there, take it off, relocate it about here, and then bond it and rivet it back in place. And then you're left with a big hole here. They sell you the plate. Do you want to know how much it costs for just the side pods, the outer skin only, because this company also do the inside skins. Have a guess. A grand. I don't know if my budget will stretch that far, but that's just for the side pods. They'll, they'll sell you the jig and they'll sell you everything you need to move that uh, structure of beam thing. I'm not being funny again. For the finish that I want on this van, I don't think I've got the skill set to be able to start cutting up part of the structure of the van. I just don't like that idea. That company can do it for me. I can pay them and they will do it for me. They also sell a bed frame actually. And the bed frame has got those support beams built into the bed frame, but that bed frame's grand as well. And then the inside shell. So you've got the outside pod and then they've got an inside sort of insert like finishes it off really nice. That inside pod is a grand. I'm not paying three grand just to get a couple of extra inches. I know some men will, but I won't. I'm happy how it is but I could get the outside pods and get that company to do it. I think they said 500 pound or 495 to fit them, which I don't think that fitting cost is that bad considering the work that's involved. That's, that is what it is. Option two is another one that we like the look of. It's not a king size bed like we've got now, but instead a double bed. And not traversely either, more lengthways. So if we go lengthways, it's gonna bring the bed out to about here, which means my shower unit would come to about here, leaving exactly five foot 10 from there to over there where we can put two seats to turn into a single bed for when Jacob or Alfie sleeps. You know, single beds just like that, two seats just like that with these metal rungs and the table sits on top of that to make a single bed. And then over this side with the sink, we extend this unit all the way down to the end, possibly lift it up a bit just to cover the diesel heater that's underneath that seat just there and have the full unit going all the way across. What's that gonna cost me though? Let's have a think. So that's gonna cost me a lot. Let's just leave it like that, shall we? Because the shower unit alone, now again, there's only three or four companies that actually build the shower unit. And I'm like, huh? Why? The thing is, when you've got less companies, they can charge pretty much whatever they want. We found that with the R&J swivel seat base, that was £700 because they are the only company that actually supply them and fit them and design them and manufacture them and you know the score. Anyway, the shower unit is a grand. So I'm thinking I can make a shower unit. That can't be that hard, surely. It's just straight panels in theory. I don't know what I'll do for the door. I don't know. I haven't got a clue we're still looking at that we're currently in the stage of i can't do this until the crash damage is repaired on the back you know remember when i reversed it into a canopy awning porch thing and totally destroyed the top well that can't get fixed until uh february solely because the part that i need the panel that i need for the top of the roof it proper bent it that is on back order from vw vw won't manufacture them until they get enough orders i've got to wait until mid-february to get that sorted when that's sorted though Whole new ceiling, boof. I can't wait to get rid of this ceiling. Have you seen this ceiling? Just as a reminder, look how wavy it is. <laughs> I can't wait to get rid of that ceiling. We've got some big plans for that, some nice fabric and it's gonna look, oh, perfect. Then we've got the overhead storage. Now this is why we wanna sort of really design the shower unit to our spec so we can get the right size single bed and we can get the right size overhead storage. But I'm thinking of buying them so that I can get the finish that I desire. We'll get some more storage over the actual bed as well, some overhead up there. Now, if we go lengthways with the bed, front to back, we'll have a bit of extra room over that side, so we'll be able to stick cubby holes down there. I can probably build that because if it looks a bit crap, I can just cover it in some carpet or something. We're gonna be losing all that storage unit space just there. All of that is gonna be gone, but we make up for it in loads of other storagey bits up here as well. 
plus the overhead storage we're doing over there, plus the overhead storage we're doing over here. Now, even finishing touches like this, you can get a panel to cover all this wiring harness area at the top, along with a microwave unit here. So we don't know whether we're gonna go microwave unit or plate unit, but again, this is all just, we've not physically been to a company yet and said we want these. It's still all just in the idea phases. That's a job for next year. Plus, along with that, the over cab storage unit. I didn't like the idea of having the one, the cheap one where it just sits on top of the handles. You know, these handles just here. You can get a piece of wood that just sits on top of there, goes all the way across. If I did that, I wouldn't be able to lift up my swivel seats to the right height. And when you sat in that, your head will be hitting it. So I found a couple of companies that make it so it comes up to about here. That would be absolutely perfect. Not cheap, 380 quid for that one unit. And then I've still got to cut the headline now to fit some brackets up there. I rambled on about that far too much. But yeah, we've got some big plans for a design change in the van in February. Subscribe for that. I can't wait to get this done. This is again part of the upgraded sort of scenario that we're doing. You see, that is another Ally Time 200 amp hour lithium ion battery. Let me tell you about it. Now, this is part of the Ally Time lithium ion range. So you can get loads of different sizes. This one's a 200 amp hour. That means it's a 2,560 watt hour capacity. It has an intelligent 100 amp battery management system. So that's a system that detects the temperatures, when it can charge, when it can't charge, just keeping an eye on the battery, making it last as long as possible, which this battery can last over 10 years with over 4,000 cycles, zero to 100%. It's got an LP65 waterproof rating. So it basically can be used for maritime use and in camper vans and RVs. It can charge in temperatures as low as zero degrees Celsius, right the way up to 50 degrees Celsius. Most importantly, it can discharge, meaning it will give you electricity from minus 20 degrees Celsius, right the way up to 60 degrees Celsius. And what's better, it comes with all the information, the paperwork that you need to be able to get it sorted for yourself. I've left some links and discount codes in the description for you. We're going to be connecting that up to our existing 200 amp hour ally time lithium ion battery because with these new upgrades we're going to have a lot more draw coming off the batteries so i want more capacity there to be able to cope for the more draw we've got an inverter going in so we're doing away with the power bank going for an inverter we've got a microwave going in that's going to be run off the inverter with again still undecided on a microwave we've got the water heater because we're going to have a shower we're going to have hot water that's going to draw off the batteries so we're going to we've got a lot of draw so i want more capacity within that drawer now you need to charge it before using that and my original 200 amp hour ally time battery is fully charged so all i'm going to do is put that battery where it should go just there and then take off these terminals put it straight onto the other battery let the other battery charge up from one our solar panels to our dc to dc charger then once that one's fully charged over there then i can connect them both up so that i have 400 amp hours to install it you need one of three items you either need a posi screwdriver bit a flat baited screwdriver bit or a 13 mil socket and that's just solely because these are what you've got to tighten and untighten to get in so that'll either fit in a 13 mil a flat blade will fit in that fitting or a posi drive will fit in it and with the new battery in and charging the old battery sat over there waiting for this one to be charged so that we can connect them both together and get our 400 amp hours obviously we tidy up the wiring too with the engine running on the dc to dc charger and the solar power that we've got coming in right now which isn't a lot we're taking in 439 watts that's 32 amps. But while I'm here, I want to try something. So I've got the cleaning liquid in there. It's basically just fairy liquid. I'm going to spray it on the solar panels, give them a good clean, and then I'm going to catch them dry. And I want to see if that just helps out the solar a bit more. Currently, in this sort of overcasty conditions, we're currently drawing 19 watts from the solar. Let's see what it is after we clean them. Look at the colour of that. They didn't even look that dirty. I must admit, I do love those batteries. I got one ages ago, and it's been mind-blowing. The difference between lithium ion and lead acid is mental not just the weight saving because the lithium ions are so light compared to the equivalent capacity that you get with a with a lead acid battery i've just pulled up the list i actually made a list this time last year of the goals that i wanted to achieve this year and one of them was the social media side of things now i know a lot of people don't really care too much about this but this was quite a big deal to me i wanted to get twenty five thousand subscribers on youtube twenty five thousand followers on tiktok and twenty five thousand followers on facebook admittedly i don't really use instagram too much solely because i don't know it it's a young person's game instagram i'm not too clued up on it i try 
but I don't do too much. Anyway, I smashed all those goals. I've literally recently just gone over 25,000 subscribers on YouTube, so thank you, every single one of you. You're all absolutely amazing. You guys, by subscribing, are making my dreams come true. And that's not me over-dramatizing everything, you see, because my dream is to become a full-time social media creator so that I could travel and show you guys everything. I love creating the videos. So if I can show you everything, so like the scenery that I'm going to, the places I'm going, the castles that I'm seeing, the waterfalls, the views, the mountains, I love all that and I love to share all that with you guys. And to be able to do that as my full-time job, that's going to be even more epic. We're so close to that. We'll get onto that in a minute, actually. Um, YouTube, 25,000 subscribers. That's mental. Absolutely insane. I didn't even know that was possible. Thank you, everyone. TikTok. I've just had a rather loud video blow up on TikTok, and that sent me up to 53,000 followers. That's double what my goal was. That's mental. Facebook, over 32,000 followers. Again, massively insane. So I've smashed all those goals massively. I think for Instagram, we've got over 10,000 followers now as well. I've not checked that in a few days, so bear with me. If you do send me a message on Instagram DMs and I don't reply straight away, it's because I forget all about Instagram and then randomly I just think, oh, I've got a notification. I go and check it then. I can't wait to get this van sorted into a, a high-end spec. That's going to be mind-blowing. Just having a shower, a fixed shower, so I don't have to go outside to shower. I don't have to go to the gym to shower. I can go completely off-grid in the mountains and have an indoor shower, even when the weather's bad. I've only found a couple of companies that do all the work unit, all the units that I want, the overhead storage and stuff. And I'm looking at them, but I've not looked heavily into them. I know they're not cheap, but if you know of any, or if you recommend any companies that do that sort of stuff, I know Evo Motion do them, they're quite expensive. Um, Vans Adventures, they've got a fair few. I found them on TikTok, actually. This is why I love TikTok. I just type in anything and loads of stuff pop up and I find out loads of new stuff. It's like a new dictionary, but most of the spelling's wrong. I'm so excited to get this van tarted up into a, a next level sort of, yes, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to do that. But I've got to get the van fixed first. It's amazing how close I actually am to taking social media full time, meaning I can travel a lot more. I can see my son a lot more. I can just live the dream lifestyle. And that's going to happen next year. I'm going to set that as a new goal, actually. That is going to happen next year. And do you know what? It could happen right now, but I'm too impulsive with financially. So... Like, I've got the money now to where I, I could do it confidently and have the backup to be able to do it confidently because I've got the money saved up there. But instead, I want to spend that money on new units and stuff like that. That's just my lifestyle, that is. That's how I, that's how I roll. But there's definitely going to be more adventures next year. 100%. Not so much, probably more, more so the longer adventures. I want to do, like, the west coast of Scotland, but, like, take a good couple of weeks to do it. Go all over the Isle of Skye. The Isle of Skye's my nemesis. Every time I've wanted to go there, I've never actually made it there. So that's one thing I want to do. But then I want to work my way up to John O'Groats and then do a tour of John O'Groats down to Land's End. I was thinking about doing that without touching a motorway. How cool would that be? You get to see all, like, the off-grid castles and stuff like that. Don't come through the centre of England. Go, like, down Wales Way and stuff like that. Granted, if I go down Wales on that run, I'm going to have to touch a motorway to get back over into England. I'm sure, I'm sure we can find a way around that. Either way, we have got a lot of big adventures and some cracking videos coming out for you next year. Here's a one I had. I was highly caffeinated when I thought of this one, but... Van life hide and seek, get three or four years together, and I just turn around and say, right, here's fifty pound. That's all you're allowed. That's got to cover your fuel, your food, everything. Go. You've got twenty four hours. Go and hide, and then I can spend as long as it takes, or until one of them runs out of money, to be able to go around trying to find them. I shouldn't really be putting these ideas out on the internet because somebody's going to steal them. But uh, yeah. I reckon that's going to be a cracking adventure. You find out loads of clues and hints and tips from like their social media, go on their Instagram stories and there they are. Oh, I recognise that. Off you go trying to find them to find out that they're actually faking it and they're not actually there. They're in the other end of the country. And I just reckon that that video could last weeks, but it'll be so cool. Imagine if one of them ran out of money and then they got a little farm job for a day, got a bit more money and then shot off somewhere else further up the country, then got another little day's work, got a bit more money for a bit more fuel, and then shot further up. One could be right in the top end of Scotland when we started in Cornwall. 
oh no, do you know what I've just realised? I'm sat here looking at the design of the van and how things are going to work. And then I've remembered my new fridge. My big new fridge is 60 centimetres deep. Well, this unit where it would sit in is not 60 centimetres deep. So it, chances are it's going to be sticking out a lot. That's not high-end spec. I don't like that idea. Where else could it go? Because over here is going to be a bed. It's going to be a single bed, two seats and a little bed. Over there is going to be a shot. Oh, brainwave. We look down here, we've got that unit there. Now, again, this unit is going to be following it out all the way down to the back wall. So this piece isn't going to be there. So we're going to have a bit more space on that back wall. So it can take away those units. They can go in the extra overhead storage and the fridge can fit in there. That's just one idea I've just spitballed anyway. I'll tell you one thing I wanted to do this year, but I've not managed to do. I wanted to lose some weight. Instead, I've stayed exactly level. I've lost a load and then be dead happy when I got a kebab or I have took on a load of work where I'm sat down driving all the time and I've just put it all back on again. So I wouldn't mind doing that next year. This is the thing, when your New Year's resolutions fail, don't look down on yourself. Just look at how you can improve, how you can move forward. I think the highlight of this year so far and this is the highlight, and I found out some new stuff about myself through doing it, is the people that I've met. When you're in the middle of absolutely nowhere, and then you see a local come up with his dog, and they're going for a walk up in the hills, and you just start talking, or you see someone going out mountain biking, and you're just talking. Some of the, the amount of stuff that I've learned, the amount of stories that I've heard, I found out that I actually really, really love talking to people who have got a passion about something. When they're talking passionately about whatever it is and you're probably getting into a conversation, you're vibing off their high energy and their enthusiasm and it's just absolutely amazing. I love talking to people that have got a passion for something when they're talking about that passion. That's something you don't get in working life. Nobody's passionate about working, are they? <laughs> I love this. Just sat here reminiscing on all the amazing memories I've made this year in the amazing locations all the mountains I've climbed, all the new Wainwrights I've ticked off, all the people that I've met. It proper cheers you up. If you're ever down in the dumps, just sit back and think of all the good memories you've made this year because it is mind-blowing. And if you've not made any decent memories or you can't think of any, plan some. Go and make some. It's the random moments of pure spontaneity. That's a posh word for me, spontaneity. Well, I'm not proud of myself for that one. It's those random moments that are always the best. You sat there bored one night watching TV. Come on, let's go for a walk. You never know what you're going to find because there's one saying that a little old man told me once. You miss 100% of the opportunities that you don't take. You may not even know it's an opportunity at the time you take it. Just take it. You never know what could happen. I mean, look at me and this HGV test that I'm going through at the moment. That was just a random advert that popped up on Facebook. I decided to click it, went through it, and I thought, oh, yeah, fair enough, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Free government-funded HGV license. I'll upgrade my coach driving license up to a HGV for free. Why not? Boom, pass me theory test, pass me hazard perception, pass me case studies. And then January, mid-January, I've got just over a week where I'm going through all the driving setup stuff. I'm nervous about it, but also, do you know what I might do with that, actually, is... If I take that and I pass that, then I might finish work, but go and do a few months HGV work just to get some experience under my belt. And then I can go off and the whole idea for the HGV was to have a backup. So let's, let's say I'm spending a month in the Scottish Highlands and I'm like, okay, I'm a bit skint. The social media hasn't worked out as well this month for whatever reason. I could do with dropping in three or four shifts. How can I do that? Where can I go? The HGV license gives me an extra backup next to my coach driving license, next to some labouring, next to some seasonal work. There's always going to be work around. It just gives me an extra option to get a higher earning job. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know I ramble on far too much. Danielle designed this merch. Look at that. Indy Vanna Jones. So we might be adding some sort of merchandise somewhere along the line early next year, maybe. Maybe that's a, a forward thinking thing. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing I have booked for the next year. It's, I'm quite nervous about really. I'm not really that much of a people person. I don't do big crowds and stuff like that because I just go, hi, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do. Overthinking, it's just one of those things. Anyway, I booked a couple of those van life festivals. Everyone keeps saying they're great for meeting people. So I thought, do you know what, I'll give it a go. I've got a little van life meetup with a load of friends on a site. I think it's on a site, I don't know. I just got told PayPal me 34 quid and come down on these dates. Okay, there's loads of us going. Perfect, I'll do that. That's early January. 
I've got another one in April. That's a VW specific one. So it's like dubbed out community on Facebook. Both. I booked onto that one. I forgot where that is. I'll have to look through my emails. And then booked on another one at the end of May, beginning of June. Uh, that's a massive one by the looks of things. I didn't realise the extent of how big that actually is. A uh, Van Life Festival, it's called. I don't know. I got golden tickets and I don't didn't even know what the golden ticket was when I booked it. But I read up on it. It says you can go there a day early. Okay. I, I'm determined to not drink at these festivals though. Because I get far too chatty when I'm drinking. And no, I haven't drank now. That's why I'm not chatty. I'm currently chatty because... I'm tired. <laughs> I've just done a full night shift in work, a hard night shift in work. This wind that's blowing us around like crazy is, yeah, it's hard to drive in those conditions when you're driving a large vehicle. So I'm going to leave you all there. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing Christmas. Thank you for 2023. I look forward to seeing you all in 2024.